Hello, friends. This is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and today I have been talking to a good friend of mine, Run DMV. And as we were discussing, we were talking about Bo-Katan and just how amazing she is and how awesome she is and just how excited we are to have her coming to the game. And you guys have seen dozens of videos going over this, and I'm not going to spend time on that. I think her kit looks great. But as I'm looking at this kit and as awesome as I think she's going to be, it's still kind of missing something. Not something major, not something like crazy powerful. But it's missing that top tier character. Bo-Katan is great. We know her. We love her. She's awesome. She's finally in the game. And I'm not dissing on that. What I'm saying is she is not a legendary character. She's not a, a, a hero's journey character. She's not the result of an epic confrontation. But there will be a Mandalorian who is. It's likely... That the character coming to this game is none other than the former Darth Maul. The current Maul. Now, as Ren and I were talking about this, we, we were debating on, on what he could be. And we both agreed Maul's story is one of the most heartbreaking, heart-wrenching stories in, in Star Wars canon. Right? If you look at his, his arc, he's, he's just this, like man driven by by revenge by anger by hatred he is the darkness he is the dark side and and we were talking about this uh and really if you actually look at anyone from dathomir they're all live really tragic stories um but if you if you look at this we were kind of looking at uh what he could be and, and you know kind of looking at what the events in the game currently are um and again we thought legendary character right or, or hero's journey. But as we were looking at the hero's journey, or as I was looking at the hero's journey before making this this event or this this uh, video, there are specific characters, but there's always five. There's always five specific characters for a hero's journey event. And as I was looking at the characters that Maul would be part of, or that Maul kind of touched throughout his hero's journey there's more than five so i've put together all five i've put together all the characters that maul has influenced for good or bad in the the star wars galaxy of heroes currently right you've got sidious of course you've got sidious the palpatine we have is imperial palpatine so i don't feel like that necessarily fits as we know of yet um, and then you got Maul, obviously, but you got Savage Press, you've got Count Dooku and Grievous. Now, for those of you who haven't read Son of Dathomir, do it. There is a, a story in Son of Dathomir that is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's a four-part story arc. It was going to be part of the Clone Wars. It was left out uh, once Disney purchased uh, Lucasfilm, and, and it is amazing. But there is a battle scene between General Grievous... Count Dooku, Sidious, and Maul. It's it's those four people fighting, and it is freaking awesome. Just an awesome, awesome battle. Now, obviously, Maul had a connection with, with Qui-Gon Jinn, with Anakin and Ahsoka, clearly Obi-Wan Kenobi, a little bit of Rex, right? We see Rex to some extent. Uh, Gar Saxon, Sabine Wren, Mandalorian Super Commando, I mean, we can imply. Now, when people see this next one, the armor, you're like, what are you talking about, Thaddeus? There's no way. It's very possible that the armorer is actually Rook Cast. Now, Rook Cast is uh, and was a member of Death Watch. We do know that the armorer is a member of or connected to Death Watch, not only because of the horns on her helmet, but also because what she said to Din Djarin, she was part of his coven or his clan or whatever. And then, so yeah, I, I think that she's Rook cast, but still I think that Maul had an impact on her, even if she's not. Then we've got Ezra. Clearly Ezra. We've got Asajj Ventress, Asajj and Maul. While they didn't team up or anything, Asajj trained uh, Savage, 
and Asajj and, and Kenobi fought a Savage and Maul. It all worked out. Old Ben, Fulcrum, and the lady herself, Kira. Now, we don't necessarily know what Maul and Kira's connection will be in the future, but we know that they're connected somehow. Now, all of these characters are people that could fit into some kind of Maul event. So it doesn't make sense that we would get only five. So, as I was looking again at, at this, the hero's journey, or, or the, the journey, the legendary event, right? What do these characters need? Well, every single legendary event has a specific faction. So, faction for uh, aggressive negotiation, Separatist. Empire's Demise, Rebels. Grandmaster Yoda, Jedi. You, you, you see a pattern here, guys. And, and while they're all specific, there is one end game event that uses specific event characters or specific event or characters for that event. And that is the epic confrontation. Now, we have two in the game right now. We have Starforge Showdown and we have Clash on Kamino. Both of these are different. So a third epic confrontation could also be different. But what they do have in common is when they have specific character requirements, those character requirements are not specific to factions. They're not specific to just ships. Uh, they are whatever the event needs. With the Starforge confrontation or the Starforge showdown, you have uh, units on the light hands, the light side. You have units on the dark side depending on which path you're going to go down. On Clash of Camino, you have different events based on that specific node, that specific uh, tier of the event. So when it comes to a Darth Maul event, how would it look? Now, I've, I've broken this down. And, and again, I, I looked at a lot of different ideas and I brought up a lot of different potential uh, moments, but I've been able to narrow it down to four specific events. Now they could do more, but if there are four, these are the four that we're going to see. Now we got to start off on Naboo, right? That that first battle, that first battle with Obi Wan Kenobi and Qui Gon Jinn, that is what we're going to see. Now the thing about an epic confrontation is it's all about the puzzle. It's all about figuring out how to defeat your opponent and, and working with the background, working with the environment. And what we're going to see is that final battle scene between Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, and we're going to see the opening and closing of those energy shields. You are going to have to somehow time the event right, time your attacks properly, so that you whittle him down until finally... Obi-Wan Kenobi can cut him in half. That's what's going to happen, right? And that's the, the key to it all. That's going to be the thing. Tier 2 actually is one of two different things. Tier 2 is either... is there One way or the other, it's taking us to Mandalore. Tier 2, we're either going to need Bo-Katan, Kenobi, and quite possibly a few different Mandalorians, or we're going to need Darth Sidious. If we need Bo-Katan and Kenobi in the Mandos, we are going to see a fight scene in the throne room. And that would be cool, and I would really be excited about that. But if we see Darth Sidious, I think it's going to be way cooler. Now again, that fight scene between Darth Sidious, Maul, and Savage Opress is epic. Now, for this battle, and, and this is the way that I see it, you're going to have uh, Savage be the crazy, power-hungry, defense, gobbling character he's going to try to stop you every every step of the way right and what he's going to do is as he's facing off as he's doing all of this stuff you're gonna have to whittle him down before you incapacitate maul right you're gonna have to kill him first if you kill maul first i think what's gonna happen is savage is gonna get like crazy beefed up roid rage and just you know knock you down right stop you from doing his thing that's what I see happening. And I do feel like that would make more sense than quite possibly Maul on the throne room. 
Now, tier three, we're going to stay on Mandalore, but we're jumping ahead, years ahead. And what we're going to see is we're going to see the siege of Mandalore. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Season seven of the Clone Wars, that launched about a year ago coming up, right? And within a year, I think it would make complete sense to celebrate that that year anniversary with this character, with this event, with this tier, using Ahsoka or Ahsoka Fulcrum. I don't necessarily know. I think Fulcrum makes more sense, but at the same time, neither one is really the Ahsoka that is in that moment. But it's going to be Ahsoka, it's going to be Rex, it's going to be clones, and it's going to be Bo-Katan. Now you're like, that is, come on, man, that's ridiculous because there's no synergy there. There's no real synergy. Ahsoka and Rex, kind of, you know, clones, depending, and then Bo-Katan, come on, that's nothing. But if you look at Clash on Kamino, there's no synergy in that final battle either, right? You have all of those droids with the leader being Asajj Ventress. I mean, come on. That's not a whole lot of synergy. That Now, Tier 4, the final phase. We're not on Mandalore. We're above it. And we are on the Tribunal. Right? This is the, the capital ship that Maul is being taken, is being used to transport Maul to Coruscant. This is the capital ship where Order 66 is launched. And you are going to take your clone troopers and you're going to fight Maul in the hallway scene. I mean, how epic would that be? It just makes sense. These are the, the main moments for Maul. Now... Originally, when I had this all planned out, I mean, you could you could take all of this stuff and, and his entire storyline from from uh, episode one all the way through that that moment on Tatooine with with Kenobi. And it's just heartbreaking moment with Kenobi. Oh, my gosh. He is a villain to the end. But in the end, he almost finds peace. It's oh, tragic. But this makes way more sense, right? These four moments with these characters, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, Bo-Katan, uh, maybe some various Mandos, Darth Sidious, Ahsoka, Rex, clones, Bo-Katan again, clones. All of this fits what we've been seeing. And giving us a mall with an epic confrontation or via an epic confrontation makes so much sense that it actually hurts. But what do you guys think? How far off am I? I mean, do you does do you see what I see? Do you does this do you feel it in your bones like I do? Because I think this is coming, guys. Right? And if this is our character, if Maul is going to be the guy that comes to us in an epic confrontation at the beginning of the year, Hondo will be the guy that comes to us in epic confrontation at the end of the year. Dark side, light side. That's what I'm calling, guys, and I'm calling it now. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment in the section below. While you're down there in the section below, click the bell icon to be notified anytime that I post a video or even go live. I've been doing that a lot more lately. Uh, in the section below, you'll also see links to a free Audible trial, to my Discord channel, to the Going Nerdy Swag Store, and if you ever want to check out the Funko section. I am a Funko collector, as you can see right here. But let me know what you guys think. Most importantly, tell me what you guys think in the section below. This has been Thaddeus from Going Nerdy. Like, subscribe, share, and as always, my friends, smile and stay nerdy.